All right, guys, what is up? This video is going to be all about pricing. Pricing is one of those things when people are getting into web design, when they're first starting off, they're highly confused. What price do they charge? They check different places. They see all these different prices from people doing it for so, so cheap on Fiverr, the whole way up to these really expensive web design projects, and they have no idea where to start with their price. So in this video, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to show you my philosophy about pricing, the philosophy that I recommend for you also to follow. Also, if you want, check out below this video. There's going to be a link. I wrote a huge blog post about this as well, 2,000 words. So watch the video, read the blog post. You're going to have a really good idea of how to increase your pricing straight away and also just understand how it works. How is the best way to price your services to give the most value to the client, get the best results for them, and ultimately that's going to grow your business as fast as possible. So people, when they get into web design, they have this huge dilemma. They want to get out there. They want to start doing work. They just have no idea, okay, you know, do I price it 10 an hour? Do I price this by the job? Should I price it another way? It can be very confusing. And the thing about web design, the thing about a lot of current web designers is they're pricing their service uh, at this really rock bottom kind of rate. They're all competing with each other. You see this on Upwork. Uh, if you've ever posted a job on Upwork, you'll get hundreds of applications. Everyone's trying to be the cheapest. They're trying to lock down uh, whatever project is possible by all competing on price. It's a terrible approach as a web designer because ultimately you're not going to have a profitable web design business. It's not going to be enjoyable. And often using that way of trying to land projects results in you ending up with really, really bad clients who are just not fun to work with and uh, very, very frustrating projects. So you really want to avoid competing on price that doesn't mean that your pricing is not going to be competitive. It doesn't mean that you're going to have these ridiculously high prices. It just means that your focus when you're talking to a client, when you're pitching your services, it's not you know, primarily about the price, it's about the value. And I'm going to go over that in this video. You really want to lead uh, your pricing strategy, your sales strategy with value first. Price always, uh, you know, at least if you're doing it right, price should always come after once you've figured out what the value in this is for the client. And uh, I know that's a big word with a lot of different meanings. I'm gonna break down in this video exactly what I mean by value. So the first thing you wanna do with any potential client, if you've got a warm lead, if you've heard about somebody who might need a website, if you're approaching someone through cold call, cold email, whatever, the first thing you wanna do with this person is build trust. I'm gonna get into why that's hugely important, but that's always the very first thing. You need to build this rapport with this potential client so that they open up to you and so that they start answering some questions uh, that's going to be the next stage. So in the beginning, whatever you can do to build trust right away is going to pay off uh, a huge amount as you get more and more into the sale. So if it's on some sort of platform where you're applying for work, make sure you got a great profile, make sure your photo is good. If you're applying through social media, make sure you know your Facebook is on point, you don't have any crazy drinking pictures, you don't have any uh, crazy memes on Instagram, whatever. Keep it clean, keep it professional, show that you're somebody who's going to take this serious, show that you're somebody who cares about getting your clients good results and that uh, you're willing and you're motivated and you're capable to do the work that's going to be required to get those results. So when you reach out to someone and you actually make contact with this person, you know, you get them on the phone, get them on Skype or you meet them in person, for the first minute or two, just try to build some trust. Tell them what you're all about. Tell them you know, why you want to do this project for them, uh, why you're in web design in the first place, what it means to you to get results for clients, and just showing them you know, that you're a legit person, that you're authentic, um, that you're willing to do a good job, and for you, that it's not all about the price. Ironically, if you want to make good money in web design, you can't be focused on price. It's kind of this paradoxical thing. If you're not thinking about price, you'll actually make a lot more money with web design. Uh, the best way to make the most money is to think about value first. When you think about value, that's going to attract in the right sort of clients, the right sort of jobs that are going to lead to you making the most amount of money. So kind of, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, you want to make money. I remember those stages myself where I needed to make money to literally... Uh, pay for my rent, pay for food, uh, all that sort of stuff. But the best thing to focus on is how you can best help people, how you can best serve their business, how you can get them the best results. That's going to equal you being a really valuable web designer. You're highly uh, valuable to their business and they're happy to pay you, you know, a decent amount of money 
um, to solve those problems and to create more benefits for them. So once we have some trust, once these people can see we're not like every other web designer, that we're thinking in terms of their business, not in terms of our business, uh, they're going to open up a little bit. And what we want to do is start asking them questions about their business. What problems do they have right now? What's going on? What issues do they have? What concerns do they have? Is there anything with their business in general that they have problems with? Is there anything with their current website that they're not happy with? And basically what we're looking for, why we're asking these questions, is to get them to open up about possible areas that we can help. So the more different things that we can help with, the more different problems that they have that we can solve, all of that equals value. And at the end of this sales pitch, the amount of potential value that you can get and that you can you know, help with a web design, that's gonna equal profit. That's gonna be how much you can charge. So first trust, then we get into problems. Not just finding out, you know, let's say I go, what problems do you have? And a potential client tells me, oh, we're not getting enough sales. And then I just move on. You want to find out all about that particular problem. So if they said they're not getting enough sales, I want to ask, why do they think that is? When did sales stop uh, being so good? What do they think is the reason that sales have slowed down? What could possibly help with sales? Um, you know, are they getting sales from their website? Are they getting sales from advertisements? Uh, are they running ads on Facebook? Are they running ads on the radio? I want to find out all these different things and see where a good website could solve or help with those issues and what sort of stuff is outside my control. If they have a problem that just can't be fixed with a web design, you know, that sucks, but it's not something that I can help them with. I need to focus on finding all the different things that a website can fix. Uh, can fix. They're usually not that obvious. So you have to kind of ask a few different levels of questions. You start off with general questions, you know, finding out general problems, diving deeper, finding out the extent of those problems, all the different areas they're impacting. Is it slowing down their business? Is it causing them stress? Is it, you know, wasting time? Is it losing them clients? You want to find out all those different things because at the end of the sales pitch, that's what you're going to use to uh, come up with a possible solution. So the more problems that you can find, the more things that you can potentially solve, the more that this project's gonna be worth to them. And that's a fair approach that works for both sides. You're solving a lot of problems, so it makes sense that you can charge more money. People that come at it and they're only thinking about price from the beginning, they're not thinking about value, they're missing all these other things. You're just gonna come straight in and go, a four page website, okay, $600, and they're not thinking, you know, is that what this person actually needs? Is that what's going to solve their problems? How does that add value to them? And they have no idea if that's the best possible thing for them. It could even be too much, but um, a lot of the times they're missing stuff that they could add into that website that they could do extra that the client is going to be more than happy to pay for because they're getting so much more in return. So in the beginning, build trust. Uh, then we move into finding out our problems the next thing we want to do is see if there's anything else that we can add into this website, this website project to add even more value. So a good way of doing this is asking them uh, what their goals are. What are they trying to achieve in the future? What are they working on right now? Uh, what would they like to see that could help them get results? These sort of questions that are going to draw out uh, what they're trying to do in the next you know, three months, six months, one year. And again, we're going to look for stuff that a website can help with. So if they're saying things like, you know, we're trying to attract uh, these bigger clients that uh, want to hire us for bigger projects, then we can start thinking, okay, is there any way I can do this with a website? Maybe if we had a portfolio section, maybe if we had a better services section, uh, maybe if we had some cool videos on there, maybe if we had more photos or some really good copywriting that explains these things. You don't have to be saying this to the client <laughs> as they're telling you these things, but in the back of your head, um, you're thinking about all these different ways that you could be adding value with the website. Two main ways of adding value is to solve problems that they have, or the other way is to get them closer to things that they want to achieve. So if I can get rid of a problem, if I can reduce um, the wrong sort of customers calling them, that's potential value right there. If I can get them closer to something, you know, if they want to land a different sort of client or if they want to land big projects and I can make that happen through something that I add into this website, again, that's potential to add value. So once we've gone over this two different things, looking for problems, looking for potential to add value, what we now want to do is start discussing uh, what budget they have to spend, 
you know, what's their, um, what's their perceived value in this project. So at this stage in the call, you kind of recap a little bit. Look, I know you're having issues with this, this, this. I know that's impacting this, this, this. And also you're trying to achieve uh, this thing. You're trying to achieve that thing. I know a website could help this. I know it could do this, it could do this. And again, you're going to list off how your website would solve these certain issues. And then you move into budget. So you might say something like, look, do you have any budget in mind for a project like this? Do you um, have any sort of figure that you would be happy to spend to get all these things done? Whatever price they say at this point, uh, even if, you know, sometimes they won't even know a price, but if they mention a figure, that doesn't mean that's the permanent figure. It just means um, at this stage in the sales call, that's what they perceive this being worth. You can move that figure up, you can move it down, you can keep it the same, but you just want to get them to start thinking about it at this stage in the sales call, what this is worth to them. Uh, once they give you a figure, I mean, if that's a good figure, if you're happy with that, you can start kind of locking in on that. If not, you can go over um, why you think it should be more. So let's say they said it's 1,500 and you think it should be 3,000. You could explain your reasons why. <clears throat> if you don't have experience with this, I'm going to explain that in just a few moments. But if you do have experience and you think it should be worth more, transition into that. Explain, hey, look, if you pay me 3,000, I can do some really good designs on this. I can edit these photos to look really, really good. Uh, I can work with a copywriter. We can produce some great content. Uh, I can work in this contact form to figure out those issues that you mentioned. You're explaining why you need this budget and what that means to them in terms of results. You're not just saying, hey, you know, the price is 3000 Either you take it or I walk. You're showing them that if they spend this amount of money, they can expect this to happen, that this is what you're going to do for them, and that this is the end results that are worth so much more that they could potentially have. If you don't have experience with web design, if you're just starting off, that's a little bit difficult to do. Uh, what you want to do in the beginning is just do work for a very reasonable rate, maybe even price it by the hour or just price it by the job. But again, you're not leading with price. You're just doing it at that price for now so that you can get some experience, so that you can see that you can actually get results for people. And then later, using the same approach, you can start increasing your prices. So that's it for now. Just a quick video on pricing. I'm going to do some more of these in the future. Check out the article below. I wrote a lot more about this stuff. Leave any thoughts you have below, any questions you might have or suggestions for other videos. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video.